For these questions, we are calculating the bearing from a point to the origin. We're not starting at the origin, which means we want to draw coordinate systems at the different points we're talking about. So for part A, we're talking about C to O. So I'm going to draw a coordinate system here. The angle from C to O in relation to the north-south line, that's a right angle formed on the y-axis. That means that this angle here is 50 degrees, which is complementary to the angle that we're looking for, which is 40 degrees. That means that the bearing for C to O is north as it's going up, 40 degrees west. What about from B to O? Let's draw another coordinate system. From O to B, we don't have a, um, an acute angle. We have 118 degrees. We need to cut out the 90 degrees of the first quadrant so that we are left with the 28 degrees here. That means that from the north line to the ray OB, that's 28 degrees. So I want to know what the angle is from the north-south line here. What is that angle measurement that I'm talking about? Because I'm going from B to zero. Again, these are alternate interior angles. This is also 28 degrees, but I am going south 28 degrees east because I am going from B down and to the right, which is southeast. When I'm talking about alternate interior angles, I'm talking about two lines that are parallel and cut by a transversal. For this transversal and these angles, vertical angles are congruent. We know that um, that means that 1 and 3 are congruent, 2 and 4 are congruent, 5 and 7 are congruent, 6 and 8 are congruent. But in addition, because both of these lines are parallel and they're cut by the same transversal, angles 1 and 3 are the same as 5 and 7. Angles 2 and 4 are the same as 6 and 8. Angles 2 and 8 are alternate exterior angles. Angles 4 and 6 are alternate interior angles. Angles 1 and 7 are alternate exterior angles. And angles 3 and 5 are alternate interior angles. 1, 3, 5, and 7 all have the same angle measure. 2, 4, 6, and 8 all have the same angle measure as well. When I was describing this question and saying alternate interior, this is the geometry um, properties that, that show why that's true. A boat leaves a dock headed north 27 degrees west at 6 knots, which is nautical miles per hour. That's a rate. Determine the number of nautical miles north and the number of nautical miles west that the boat travels in a half an hour. We're going to round to the nearest tenth of a mile. Let's draw what we have to describe this picture. Because the boat headed north 27 degrees west, I have an angle measure of 27 degrees from the north-south line. The boat was traveling at six knots or six nautical miles per hour, but for only a half an hour. That means that they've only traveled half of that, which is then three nautical miles. The distance of that ray then is three nautical miles. I need to figure out how many nautical miles are traveled west and how many nautical miles are traveled north then. So what I want to do is figure out what is the distance here and what is the distance here. That's the distance north. This is the distance west. I'm given a hypotenuse and an angle. I want to find an adjacent and I want to find an opposite. The sine of 27 degrees is equal to the west value over 3. And the cosine of 27 degrees is equal to the north value over 3. 3 sine 27 degrees equals the west value, or 1.4 nautical miles. 3 cosine 27 degrees is equal to the north distance, or 2.7 nautical miles. Lastly, a plane is leaving an airport, heading at a certain bearing at a certain speed, and then after two hours, the plane makes a turn, has a new bearing, for a new amount of time. Where is the plane in relation to the airport? Find the bearing from that airport. Let's draw a picture to describe what's happening here. First of all, 
a plane leaves the airport heading south, which is down, and east, which is right, for 50 degrees. That's 50 degrees right here. That's happening at 450 miles per hour for two hours. That means the plane has traveled 900 miles. The distance of that ray from the first point to the plane at two hours is 900 miles, and that's a 50 degree angle. The plane then turns clockwise 90 degrees. It's gonna be perpendicular to that line that it was traveling for another half an hour. Same speed, but just for half an hour. We wanna find the plane's distance from the airport to the nearest mile. And we want to find the, to the nearest degree the bearing from the airport to the plane. So we want to connect this line. In order to find the plane's distance from the airport, we can use that ray as it's the hypotenuse of this triangle. It has sides 225 miles and 900 miles. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we can say that the distance is equal to the square root of 225 squared plus 900 squared which is roughly 928 miles, then the bearing for this is going to be found by determining this angle right here. If we find the tangent of this angle alpha right here, we know that alpha, and let's call this beta, the angle that we're trying to figure out, sum to 50. That's one approach. We know that it has to sum to 50 because of our original bearing. The tangent of angle alpha is going to be equal to 225 over 900. Or the inverse tangent of 225 over 900 is going to be equal to alpha. Alpha is about 14 degrees because we're rounding to the nearest degree then beta is going to be equal to 50 minus alpha or 50 minus 14, which is 36 degrees. The bearing is then south 36 degrees east. As that from the airport to the airplane was going down into the negative y's and to the right into positive x's, which is south 36 degrees east.